let's briefly overview the steps of aerobic respiration. We can break it into four metabolic events, glycolysis, the link reaction, citric acid cycle, which is also called the Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation, which includes the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. From start to finish, glucose and six oxygen molecules are used to make 38 ATP, six carbon dioxide molecules, and six water molecules. Let's look at the first step, glycolysis, in more detail. Glycolysis will occur with or without oxygen in the cytosol of the cell. It's not just a simple reaction to form the two pyruvate molecules at the end. It's actually a 10-step process using 10 different enzymes. The first five steps are part of a phase called the preparatory phase, where the ATP molecules are required in two of the steps. The last five steps are the payoff phase, where four ATP molecules are created, along with two NADH molecules. Because two ATP molecules are used in the preparatory phase, glycolysis has a net production of only two ATP and two NADH, along with the two pyruvate molecules. The ATP can be used immediately, and the NADH and pyruvate will move into the mitochondria. While NADH won't be used until the last phase of aerobic respiration, the pyruvate molecules will be used in the next step, the link reaction. This reaction occurs in the fluid matrix inside the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The pyruvate molecules, which have so far been shown as just three carbon molecules, will now be shown with oxygen and hydrogen atoms as well. Large molecules, called coenzyme A, react with the pyruvate molecules. In this process, a hydrogen ion is picked up by NAD, reducing it to NADH, and pyruvate is decarboxylated. This means carbon dioxide is released, and our final molecule is called acetyl-CoA. The NADH will leave to be used in the final steps of aerobic respiration, Carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the mitochondria and out of the cell, and acetyl-CoA will be used in the next step. So to review, two pyruvate molecules are decarboxylated and oxidized by coenzyme A and NAD, forming two molecules of acetyl-CoA, two molecules of carbon dioxide, and two molecules of NADH. Acetyl-CoA will be used in this step, which has many names. The Krebs cycle is also called the citric acid cycle and the tricarboxylic acid cycle. All of these names refer to the same process, which occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle is another big enzymatic pathway like glycolysis, but this one occurs in a cycle, creating end products that can be used again at the beginning of the cycle. Each turn of the Krebs cycle has two decarboxylations and four oxidations. We start with acetyl-CoA from the link reaction, which will react with oxaloacetic acid to form citric acid. This is where one alternate name of the cycle comes from. After two more steps, NAD is reduced to NADH and decarboxylation occurs, so carbon dioxide is released. In the next step, NAD is reduced again and decarboxylation happens again. The resulting molecule now has only four carbon atoms. In the next step, ATP is phosphorylated. Then in the following steps, which will reform oxaloacetic acid, FAD will be reduced to FADH2, and NAD will be reduced to NADH. This is just one turn through the Krebs cycle, but glycolysis produces two acetyl-CoA molecules, so the cycle will occur twice. All of the NADH and FADH2 produced here will go to the last phase of aerobic respiration called oxidative phosphorylation. This is a multi-step process that occurs between the matrix and the intracellular space in the mitochondria through the inner membrane folds called the cristae. Let's zoom in on the folded crista to see what's happening. Embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane, are a series of four carrier protein complexes, 
which are called the electron transport chain. These proteins will pass electrons to one another and bring hydrogen ions through their channels simultaneously. All of the NADH and FADH2 that were produced in previous steps of aerobic respiration will finally be used here. The process outlined next is called chemiosmosis. NADH will supply hydrogen ions and two electrons for the first carrier, which will pass the electrons to the next carrier. Energy is released while the electrons move, which provides energy for protons to cross to the inner membrane space. The electrons continue to move, and NADH and FADH2 will provide hydrogen ions to be moved to the intermembrane space. The electrons need to go somewhere. They need a final electron acceptor, which will be the oxygen molecule. Oxygen will rapidly react with hydrogen ions in the matrix to form water. Now that there is a very high concentration of protons in the intermembrane space, they will diffuse through ATP synthase, which will phosphorylate ADP to make ATP, ultimately making up to 34 ATP per glucose molecule in this step alone. So in the end, from one glucose molecule, two ATP were made in glycolysis, two ATP are made in the Krebs cycle, and up to 34 ATP are made with ATP synthase from the hydrogen and electron ions carried by NADH and FADH2. Oxygen isn't used until electrons reach the end of the electron transport chain, and that's how water is ultimately formed. And carbon dioxide is made during the link reaction and in the Krebs cycle. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.